Recently, I was watching Troy Grant's channel where he was showing off some of his crash car customs. This inspired me to want to give one a try. You might think that a crash car is as simple as finding a hammer, but in reality, they're really much more difficult to pull off and get a realistic look. Most of the time, they're done using brands with much more detail, like M2 or Greenlight. These manufacturers give you more options when creating your crash car. However, I'm going to try this process out on a Matchbox Pontiac Firebird. One of the key things to look for when choosing a car is to find one that has metal all the way around. Here the base only protrudes in the front and back as the bumper. Cars that have their entire front and back ends out of plastic are very difficult to do this to unless all the damage is on the sides. The first thing I'll do after taking the car apart is to cut out the hood. I want to cut the hood out but leave it attached in the corners next to the windshield. This will allow me to raise the hood but still have it attached. I'll start with an X-Acto knife upside down to score the metal. This is done by making passes with the knife down the panel lines of the hood. I need to make it at least a quarter of the way through the metal if possible. Once this is done, I flip the car over and using a Dremel with a burr sphere, I'll begin removing metal from the back of the hood where the panel lines are. The point here is to work your way up to the cuts you made with a knife. With some time and patience, you can slowly make your way around the panel lines making the cuts. Or if you're impatient like me, you can insert a jeweler saw and get it done in a few seconds. After the hood is cut, I'll remove the post with a Dremel and a small cutoff wheel. I'll then smooth everything out with the burr tool. Next I'll move over to the driver's side door and cut most of it out. I want the door to be open and like the hood remain attached. By the way, this is a good example of what happens when you're watching what you're doing through the camera screen while filming yourself cutting out a door. Everything is much easier to do off camera. I guess that crazy cut was a harbinger of things to come because as I was bending the door open, I broke the car at the pillar. And then while bending the front of the car, I broke the hood off. This is why using other brands like M2 is a good idea as they already have the opening features incorporated on many of their models. It was at this point I had to stop and decide whether I could keep going and fix all this or abandon it and start over. My grandfather used to tell me that there were no mistakes, just lessons to learn from, which was sort of funny because he was a surgeon. But anyway, I decided to plow on, so let's work on the windshield. I want to put some cracks in this windshield. The easiest way to do this is to cut the plastic with an X-Acto knife. I'll leave a link to a video tutorial by Troy on how this is done, and how to get the spider web effect in your broken glass, which will really add to the look of your crashed car. With the window done, I can start gluing in parts. This is important because I need the internal plastic parts to reinforce the broken parts of the car. Super glue is more than strong enough to hold everything together, not to mention that this will only ever be a display piece. I'll also glue in all the parts that I broke off. This is pretty tedious, so I glue them all together off camera. Once the glue is fully cured, I'll use the burr tool to remove the headlights. I'll then use a small drill to drill through the passenger side headlight. This will make it look like the headlight is gone. Next, I'm going to start working on the base and wheels. I need to remove the front wheels with some plastic cutters. That's done by just removing one of the small tabs. Then I will load the wheels in my mini lathe and then cut the tire off one of them. Once again, this is much easier to do with higher end cars that have rubber tires as you can just remove the tire and be left with the rim. With the tire done, I need to start doing some trimming on the base. It really is a game of cut and test, cut and test, until the base fits back on. One of the things I'm being careful of is the bumper. I need to have enough plastic that I can reform the bumper with needle files and a Dremel. Since this is a wrecked car, the bumper doesn't need to be perfect. Just some plastic that I can apply chrome paint to that will fool the viewer into believing it's a bumper, albeit a wrecked one. Now I want to put some scratches into the driver's side door and the fender. This is done with... You guessed it, the Dremel and the burr tool. The idea here is that the driver sideswiped a car and then overcompensated and crashed into a pole. Of course, the story doesn't really matter. The point is to add a little more detail to the car. Okay, so here's where I am at this point of the project. I have all the metalwork done. The base and hood have yet to be glued on. Now is where things get fun, at least for me, because I get to start painting. I want this car to look burnt like it had an engine fire after the accident. The driver was pulled out while the car caught fire and the driver's side door was left open and partially burnt. 
I will be painting with black primer. This saves me a step by not having to clear coat over it. All the painting will be done with an airbrush as it gives the gradations necessary for a realistic look. The main purpose of the black is to add detail but also hide problems like glue joints and paint scratches. Of course the base was painted black for realism. Once the black paint dries, I start using the chrome pen to put details on the car. This includes painting the back and front bumpers, the side mirrors, and the door handles. While the chrome paint dries, I'll paint on some Nuln Oil wash onto the front and the fenders. This will give some dimension to these areas by filling in small scratches and panel lines. After the wash dries, I'll put some acrylic thinners on a paper towel and then very lightly go over all the areas I've painted. It's hard to explain what's going on here other than to say that it's a layered effect. The paper towel will remove random amounts of the paint and wash on the areas you apply it to. It also allows some of the original color to come back through so that the look is more natural. It only does this on the raised surfaces, so the valleys will go untouched. This gives the look dimension through shading. With the painting effects all done, the last step is to glue on the base and then the hood. I took care to really glue on the base to all the broken parts to really reinforce them. The hood, on the other hand, was slightly glued in three places. That should hopefully hold it. So a couple things in note on this car. I believe the side mirrors were on the doors on the real car. I couldn't reproduce this on this model as the mirror was on the pillar and not the door. I decided not to add any detail to the driver's side quarter panel. I wanted the destruction to be focused, just like a lot of real wrecks that I've seen. I've often thought about customizing a car where I leave one side new and then age and rust out the other side. I was sort of playing with that idea on this car. Looking at it now, I probably should have added a little bit of damage. Overall, I like the car, and it definitely inspires me to do another one, uh, with this one giving me a lot of good ideas for the next one. A lot of customizers make these cars for dioramas. Instead of the car just sitting in your diorama, these crash cars actually interact with it. You could imagine this car wrapped around a bent telephone pole, for example. And no, I'm not making a statement about female drivers here. She's the only 164 scale person I have. I ordered a 164 scale guy with a beer can, but he's yet to arrive. Anyway, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please comment below if you have any ideas or improvements. And once again, thanks for watching.